to textile blog. Stay with us and enrich your textile knowledge. Did you know that the oldest textile fiber used by humans dates back over 7,000 years? It's flax and today we are going to unravel how this ancient fiber is transformed into one of the most sustainable fabrics on the planet. Stay tuned because by the end of this video you will not only know everything about flax but also why it's making a huge comeback in the textile world. In today's video, we are diving deep into the process of creating linen from flax fiber, one of the oldest and most eco-friendly fibers in existence. From its rich history in ancient Egypt to its role in modern sustainable fashion, flax has been around for centuries. So, let's get started and explore how flax is grown, harvested, processed and turned into the beautiful linen fabric that's still in demand today. Segment 1. What is flax? First, let's start with the basics. Flax is a natural plant fiber and is known for being a bast fiber, meaning it comes from the stem of the plant. Because flax is primarily used to make linen cloth, it's often referred to as linen. It is one of the oldest fibers used by humans, dating all the way back to 5000 BC in Egypt. That's right, Linen was once the fabric of royalty in ancient Egypt. Fast forward to the 17th century, linen manufacturing became an established industry in Western Europe and to this day, France is the largest producer of flax fiber, contributing 75.7% .7 of the global production. Segment 2. Flax Cultivation Flax seeds need to be shallowly planted and the growing conditions can vary depending on the region. For warmer areas, flax is sown in the winter to avoid the heat of spring. It takes about 100 days from planting the seeds to harvesting the flax. Yes, you heard me right, 100 days of passions and then the magic happens. Segment 3. Harvesting Flax Once the flax plant matures, it's time to harvest it. When the leaves turn yellow and the seeds turn brown, it's harvesting time. Here's an interesting fact. Flax isn't just cut at the base like many crops. Instead, the whole plant is pulled from the roots. Why? Well, by pulling up the entire plant, the fibers running through the length of the stalk are preserved, resulting in longer, stronger fibers. This technique also prevents the plant's sap from leaking out, which could dry out the fibers and lead to poorer quality fabric. Harvesting flax can be done manually, which yields the finest linen. Segment 4. Rippling and Retting After harvesting comes rippling, where the flax bundles are drawn through coarse combs to remove the seeds. Now comes one of the most critical steps in flax processing, retting. Retting is the process of separating the valuable bus fibers from the woody stem. There are different methods for retting and here are the main ones. Water retting. This method involves soaking flax bundles in stagnant water, such as ponds or bogs. This is the most widely used method and produces the highest quality fibers. It takes anywhere from a few days to a few weeks, depending on the water temperature. Dew retting. This method is used in areas with limited water. Flax stalks are spread out in the field and left to naturally ferment under the sun and dew. It's cheaper but produces lower quality fibers. Tank retting. Flax stalks are soaked in large vats of water, which helps break down the fibers and remove impurities. This produces uniform fibers but requires specialized equipment. Chemical Retting This process uses chemicals like caustic soda to speed up retting, but it's more harmful to both the environment and the fibers, so it's less preferred. Segment 5. Breaking, Scotching and Hackling After retting, the flax stalks need to be broken down. The process of breaking involves passing the flax through flatted rollers to separate the woody core from the fibers. Then comes scotching, where the broken flax is beaten with wooden or metal blades to remove the remaining debris. Next, we have hackling, a fascinating process where the flax fibers are calmed to align them. This is done using a tool called a hackle, which looks like a bed of sharp pins. 
Hackling separates the longer, finer fibers called line from the shorter, coarser fibers called tow. Line fibers are used for high-quality linen fabrics, while tow fibers are used for more industrial purposes. Segment 6. Spinning flax into yarn. Once the flax fibers are clean and sorted, it's time to spin them into yarn. There are two primary methods of spinning flax yarn. Weight spinning. This method involves soaking the flax fibers in water at 70 degrees centigrade, which makes them more flexible and allows for the creation of finer, higher quality yarn. This is typically used for clothing and household linens. Dry spinning. Here, the flax is spun without soaking, which results in a thicker, more rustic yarn. This type of yarn is used for decorative fabrics or technical applications. Segment 7. Weaving Linen Now comes the fun part. Turning that flax yarn into fabric, linen yarn is mostly woven into fabric using a loom where threads are interwoven both horizontally and vertically. Occasionally, linen yarn is knitted into fabric, but this is less common because linen doesn't have much elasticity, making knitting tricky. Flax in Modern Textiles Historically, linen was one of the most popular fabrics in the world, from ancient Egypt to Renaissance Europe. However, over the years, cotton and other fibers have taken the spotlight. That being said, flax is still in demand, especially in hot climates for its breathable nature makes it a perfect choice for summer clothing. Today, linen is used for a variety of products, from shirts and pants to bedding and home decor. And with the increasing demand for sustainable and eco-friendly textiles, flax is making a huge comeback. Why? Because flax is biodegradable, renewable, and requires fewer pesticides than cotton, making it a greener alternative. As consumer demand for eco-friendly materials continues to grow, flax is shaping the future of textiles in industries like fashion, home decor, and even automotive interiors. Who knew that something so ancient could have such a big role to play in our modern world? If you learned something new today, give this video a thumbs up and make sure to subscribe for more textile insights. Drop a comment below with any questions or topics you would like to see covered next. Until then, stay curious and keep learning.